I learned very quickly from this author that if you want something disgusting, gruesome, bloody, gory, this is the author for you. everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my wrap up for November 2022. I read a total of 23 books this month so I will be splitting it up into two different wrap ups. The first one is actually going to be featuring a lot of the same author because I actually read pretty much all of her back log this month. Most of her books are extreme horror so if that's not what you're interested in then maybe skip this wrap up because a lot of it is going to be that so sorry in advance if you're not into it but without further ado let us get started I actually have something to talk about before we get into the wrap-up because I was so kindly sent this beautiful canvas by tailored canvases this is actually going to be my mom's 60th birthday present so if, if you're watching this mom spoiler sorry I chose a family name canvas but there are so many different options that you can choose from their website I also have a coupon code down below JN15 if you guys want to purchase your own I actually um, sat with my mom and <laughs> asked her what things she liked on the website the best and she chose this one so I mean she does kind of already know that she's getting it she just hasn't seen the finished product but it's basically our last name with our four family members the year my mom and dad got married and then welcome to our home. I think it's super cute. I'm very excited to see it hanging on our wall. Her birthday is not until December 30th so I mean we still got a long time to see this hanging but I think it turned out really really cute. Thank you so much to Tailored Canvases for sending it my way. Okay so I... now on to the actual books of the wrap-up. Like I said this is going to be very heavily featuring Rain Havoc the author so if that's not what you're into I'll see you guys in the next one. But the first book that I read of hers is Devour. I ended up giving this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This one follows Colette who finds herself in a police investigation room after the mysterious death of her husband. I learned very quickly from this author that if you want something disgusting, gruesome, bloody, gory, this is the author for you. She is so good at writing gross things. You are instantly drawn in to this novella based off of the first line. You have to keep flipping the pages to figure out why Colette did what she did. It's really weird to say you're rooting for her the entire time and you're kind of like, yes bitch, like kill your husband. He, he deserves it. The next one that I have is Lost Soul. This is another one I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. This one follows a girl named May who has been depressed for a very long time. She decides that tonight is the night that she will die by suicide. She is about to take her final jump off of a cliff edge when she hears an anguished scream and ends up stopping herself. She begins to think that life may be worth living, but she must now die in order to save her wandering soul, and it's like the story of that. Like I said, Rain Havoc is very good at gory, gruesome, disgusting, but this is so different from everything else I've ever read from her. There is such a lack of violence and blood and gore, which was actually a really nice change because I read these novellas back to back to back, so it was kind of like a nice breather. This novella is very heartbreaking. This story is very sad. I felt so much sympathy for May and Zachary. You could really feel their sadness jumping off the page. This one just kind of showed that Havoc is not a one-trick pony because I was kind of getting used to the formula of her other novellas and then this one came out of nowhere which was very refreshing. The next one I have is XXX and this one I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. This one follows Xavier who has just escaped from prison after being held captive for 8 years. He has spent the last 7 hours evading the police and that's when he stumbles across what seems to be a deserted farmhouse. When he enters the home he ends up finding two young girls and their mother who keep warning him that the man of the house will be returning very shortly, but Xavier doesn't listen. This novella was only 36 pages, but it packed a punch. The first chapter was just so bloody and gruesome. Like, I thought about putting it down, but I was like, no. Rain Havoc always has amazing twists at the end, so I wanted to see what that twist was, and I was not disappointed. It's definitely fast-paced. It is very gruesome. It should definitely be categorized as extreme horror. Like, I was very disturbed. There is a lot of violence towards young children, so definitely be aware of that going in. If that's not something that you can stomach, don't read this book. But Xavier is so fucked up, and he definitely got what he deserved in the end, so I really liked the ending, but 
you should check it out if you can handle the things I talked about because it is really good but real fucked. The next Rain Havoc book I have is called Retaliation. This one I was not the biggest fan of. I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars. So this one follows a biker who ends up being cut off in the road during traffic. He ends up following the person home in order to confront them. The man ends up not apologizing for cutting off the biker, so he decides that he is going to retaliate in his own way and it kind of takes off from there. Although this was a very quick and easy read, it was not my favorite of Rain's work. I just didn't get the same gut reaction that I did with the others. I didn't really care for any of the characters, which made it a little bit hard to feel anything for them while they were being brutally ripped apart. That's probably a me thing, but I just, this one just wasn't my favorite out of all of the ones that I've read since I've read her entire backlist. I feel like I can have that opinion. The next Rain Havoc book I have is Necrosis. I'm not 100% sure if I'm saying that properly, but I actually really like this one. I gave it a four out of five stars. So this follows a man who turns up dead after visiting an elite nightclub and there does not seem to be any cause of death. The police end up launching an investigation when connections between the strip club owner and this man arise. When another man turns up dead with the same strange markings on the male's genitalia, Chief Cunningham begins to be more involved with the case and it kind of takes off from there. This was probably one of the better Rain Havoc books that I read this month. I was very intrigued with where the story was going, how the these men were connected, how they were turning up dead. I was able to call one of the twists about why the men were turning up dead, but I did not call the ending about where it was gonna go, and I really enjoyed that. I think that the character development was really well done for such a short read. I think that Tula, the strip club owner, was such an intriguing character, and I really like the overall message that her character sent to the public. I will say, since I am talking about Rain Havoc's work, I think that her writing is so addictive. Like, I flew through these books so quickly because I just ate them up. They're so entertaining. Like I've said a thousand times, like you definitely have to have a stomach for these books because they are very graphic and very gory and gross and just have very mature themes, but if you can handle it, it's so worth it. The next one I have is Tantalize. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows a man named Gavin who becomes obsessed with his next door neighbor. He decides to take matters into his own hands in order to get what he wants from Hannah and it's the story of that. I really thought this one was fun because you get the perspective of both Gavin and Hannah, which I thought was a cool turn of events from her other novellas. I will say that I wish that we got Hannah's perspective a lot earlier than we did. It was kind of towards the end, but I think it would have been very interesting if we had seen what she was thinking before everything transpired. I really hated Gavin, which was the entire point of this book. He was just so entitled and just so confused, but he definitely got what he deserved. I really think that this one is worth reading just for the ending. It is so funny and I did not see it coming, but this one was one of the better ones. It's like a high 3.5. There was just like something that was a little off that didn't let me give it a 4, but still a lot of fun. Next up we have Daddy Issues. This is another one I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. This one was fucked. So this one follows Hayden, who takes a young 18-year-old Haley on a first date. He quickly realizes that her daddy issues run a lot deeper than he could have ever expected, and it's that story. This one was a little disappointing to me because I was able to call the big twist from miles away, but it was still very entertaining to read. I think that it will definitely shock a lot of other people, which is why I didn't give it a lower star rating because, you know, it's a me thing. It's not the book thing. I think at that point I had just read so many of Rain Havoc's works that I kind of started to understand what was going to happen. This one is definitely not as gory and violent as the other Rain Havoc books that I've talked about, so if you're wanting to pick up a Rain Havoc book but don't want the gore, this one might be for you, but it's pretty fucked up just for the whole premise. Next up is App by Rain Havoc, you guessed it. This one I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Salem and Kyle who end up matching on a dating website one Tuesday night. She is very excited for the date and then she ends up waking up the next morning not remembering a single thing. This one is also very short. It is 37 pages but again, it packs a punch. Very big punch. This one is definitely not as dark as the other ones. It definitely still has some trigger warnings, so, you know, I can't really give you those trigger warnings because it is a huge spoiler, 
but look them up if you're interested. This is told in alternating points of views between Salem and Kyle, which I think was very well done for this type of story. I definitely think that it made it a lot more intriguing than what it could have been if we only got Salem's point of view. But like I said, this one has a very interesting twist that I definitely did not see coming, but trigger warnings for sure. And then the final Rain Havoc book that I will talk about in this wrap-up is My Christmas Story. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. It follows a woman named Lydia who is spending her first Christmas alone after finding out that her husband was having an affair after 20 years of marriage. This one, definitely one of the more gory books that Rain Havoc has written. I really enjoyed it though. It was a lot of fun. I am a sucker for a revenge plot, so even though this was pretty short, Lydia got her vengeance and I loved that for her, but definitely very, 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 very gory. And then the final book that I'll talk about in this wrap-up, just to, you know, not have everything be super gory, we're gonna talk about a fluffy Christmas romance. I'm talking Stuck with Santa by Audrey Keynes. This one I gave a four out of five stars. So this follows a woman named Stephanie Saunders who believes that she is cursed. Ever since she shared a kiss with Thaddeus McGuire the third five years ago, her Christmas Eves have always been terrible. She has not seen him since these five years have passed, but now he is back as the church Christmas Santa Claus. She believes that things cannot possibly get worse until she finds herself locked in the bell tower with none other than Thad McGuire the third. I really enjoyed this. I give it a four out of five stars. This was such a cute and fluffy holiday read. It's a novella. I read a lot of novellas this month just to catch up on my Goodreads goal, which we caught up, I would just like to say. So I would like to thank Rain Havoc and all the other novella authors. Thank you so much for your work. But I am a huge sucker for the grumpy sunshine and second chance romance tropes, so putting them together was just chef's kiss for me. I think that Steph and Thad were very, very cute. I liked their chemistry, but I do think that Steph is a little bit dramatic for thinking one kiss under the mistletoe five years ago ruins your entire life. That, that was a little much, girl, but I'll let it slide. The ending was also very cute. I definitely think that this is a great little holiday novella to get you in the Christmas spirit, so I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. All right, everybody, so those were the first 10 books that I am going to be talking about for this wrap-up. If you are interested in the other books that I read to get to a total of 23. I can't do that math that quickly because I have dyscalculia. Those other books are going to be in wrap-up part two, so check that out if you're interested. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.